I'm coming up against you. Praise the Lord, you reach Pastor Priscilla Holly. Aren't you glad that God is neither hot nor cold? He's a God of creation. He doesn't get into people's personal agendas. And so when you're being faithful to God, you're going to hold on to the word of God. And you're not going to even focus on the weapon. You're going to focus on the God of creation. That no matter what the weather is, he's still God. So let us get a chance to go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, I'm so thankful, God, that you're the God of creation. Whether it's rainy, whether it's snowing, whether the wind is blowing in a tornado, whether the sun is shining or the clouds appear, you are the same God that changes not. And I'm so thankful and faithful, God, that I've never been a part of your weapon, just a part of the heavenly kingdom that is always honorable and pleasing and accepting in all your ways. I am so glad, Father, that for all the years I've labored before you, I have never been involved with your will. And so I thank you, God, because whatever the weather is, you are the God of creation. And I rejoice in knowing who you are. I love you, I honor you, I worship you. And I thank you for being holy and righteous. A God of creation. That I love all weapons. I love all colors. Because I don't put my faith and trust in weather or color. My faith and trust is in you. And because my faith and trust is in you, it does not change with people. And it does not change with ways of humanity. Because you are God that changes. Thank you for being holy and righteous and pure and true. And I rejoice abundantly. And knowing that you are my God, the faithful one of all creation. And Jesus' name I pray and give you glory. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm always filled with the joy of the Lord. Because of who he is. He's a God of righteousness. And when you trust God, you learn how to overlook certain situations. You learn how to overlook people's issues and differences. You learn how to overlook things that people do to try to accomplish because you know God is holy and righteous and he's not going to allow certain things to happen. He's just not. He's a God of all things. So what we're going to speak about today it's being more than conquerors. Romans 8.37, more than conquerors. You see, to be more than conquerors, you can't get caught in the middle of weather because God is the conqueror of all weather. You can't get caught in the middle of people's issues because God is an issue resolver. You can't get caught in the middle of whatever problems might be going on because God is a conqueror of all problems that might be going on. The Bible says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I don't know about your hot people or about your cold people. I just know about the people who trust in a holy and righteous God. I don't know about your people with your shoes for whatever they're doing it for. I just know about a God that I trust in in all seasons. No matter what, I'm wearing a coat or no coat. In other words, what I'm saying is 
I don't live my life dictated by people's division of their weather. I don't know anything about that. And I don't want to know. It has nothing to do with me. I've never made a decision in my life based on what. I just have it. And I'm too blessed and happy and blue that God has kept me away from that. And when God keeps you away from that, you have to be thankful unto God because you can look back and remember that you were never a part of it. That you don't know anything about it. And so you can rejoice abundantly. Because I would not be at a place based on a weapon. So in this verse where it says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves him. This is a larger passage that's letting us know how Apostle Paul is discussing the power of God's love. You see, when you have the power of God's love, you won't find yourself being pulled into everybody's cell phone issues or house phone issues. I don't know what that's about. Because I've never worked for a company that gave out cell phones. I don't know what that's about. Because I've never used cell phones if I sit in an office and work. I don't know what that's about. Because I don't have anything to do with giving somebody cell phones or their kids. I don't know what that's about. I've always worked for a company where we're in a room with air conditioning. I don't, I don't know anything about certain things. So when I say we're more than conquerors, you can't allow people to pull you in stuff you're not a part of for whatever reason. I, I don't get into weather. I remember someone asking me about weather. And I thought it was strange. Now, I've been going to this person since 88 or 89, and they've never asked me about weather. And the one time they asked me about weather, I thought it was strange. Why would you ask me anything about weather? And why would you ask me anything about sports? I don't know anything about that. So I just said anything. After all, I'm not there for your weather or for your sports. I'm there to receive services for you to do my hair. Not to get in weather or sports. I never knew today what it was about. I don't know what it was about. What am I saying? When you trust God, you can trust God enough to keep you out of some things. And you can trust God enough to circumvent you through some things. Because what you'll learn is that people can do a lot of things. But they can't accomplish what God will never allow to be accomplished. So when the Bible talks about we're more than conquerors, I praise God because God says if you trust in him, and lean not towards your own understanding, then these things that happens won't bother you. I don't know anything about it. So if I don't know anything about it, it can't bother me. I can't partake of it. I often wonder what it was about. I love every weather. I love hot, cold. I love winter. I love summer. I love spring. And I love fall. There's every color I love. It's not a color I don't like. I love doing a lot of things. I love all types of shoes. High heels, short boots, tennis shoes. I love skirts. I love dresses. I love pants. 
I love gym clothes. I don't live my life based on seasons of people's doings. That's what makes us more than conqueror when we live our life based on God. And when we don't allow ourselves to be pulled in, I don't know what silly women are about. I normally are not dealing with the women when I work in an office. I'm usually there with another finance person and we're working on financial matters. And so therefore we wouldn't be bothered with kids. I don't know anything about cars. I've never worked at a place where I've been involved with cars. I don't know anything about your recreational. Anything I do from recreational, I do on my own. I don't know what this mom stuff is about. I don't know why this has been going on for so many years. But what I do know, I'm so glad that I have a God that can keep me in the midst of the situation. Because when God keeps you in the midst of the situation, he preserves you with his integrity. He preserves you with his truth. He preserves you with his honor and his knowledge and his ability. I don't know what somebody wants me to be upset with. I never needed another person to buy or do anything. So I wouldn't know what that's about. Nothing's going to change for me. I don't sit down listening to a person. I usually try to stay out of people's personal issues. Because personal issues do not benefit the kingdom. It's only for those who have issues. And normally if there's personal issues, it's because they are not kingdom driven or kingdom focused. It's personal. So I don't get into people's personal issues. But what I do like about all of this is that the power of God can help you overcome difficulties. And so we're going to talk about overcoming difficulties. Overcoming difficulties. Overcoming difficulties. How do you overcome difficulties? You overcome difficulties when you know who's in control. God. When you know who's ultimately in control. God. Now, whether an air condition or heat is working, that could be difficult. That could be a difficult situation. You're living in a house and it's so hot, you can't open up your windows and you don't have air condition room. And so that could be a difficult situation. I personally have never been through that. But I'm sure somebody has. And that could be very difficult. You can't live in a hot house with no air conditioning. We know that many times the weather became so hot that many people died and some had to get air conditions or fans in other places so they could have air for your elderly or for your sick or whatever's going on. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't work in housing development. So I don't know anything about that. And I purchased my house during the winter months. So I, I don't know anything about that. And so when you think about all of this and you let God work through you, you just let God 
validate the things he's saying. Now, what would a house have to do with how to talk? Is that somebody's personal agenda? I don't know. Because when I look to buy a house, I don't buy a house based on the weather. I buy a house based on availability and when I can go to sell. If I'm in school, I don't focus on how to code. I'll graduate whenever I can graduate, whether it be how to code. If I'm working, I don't focus on how to code. I work based on the hours I have to work. So I really don't know. And I thank God that I don't. But in any event, the phrase that says we're more than conquerors is translated as super conquerors, overwhelmingly victorious. Now, I'm one that's very, very able to handle a lot of multiplicity of tasks. I'm able to work with a multiplicity of people from different personalities because I've been in supervision ever since 87 and 84. Actually, I've been in supervision ever since 84, 1984. So you have an understanding of dealing with personality. I'm not a person that really gets stressed out. Having money and not having money don't stress me. I don't really get stressed. I don't really get tired unless I'm working two and three years and I only get one or two days off, I may get tired going two and three years with no vacation. But on the average, none of that bothers me. What am I saying? Sometimes God gives people different abilities to be able to have a lot of energy. I have a lot of energy. And so I allow God to direct my energy. That's just how I am. I don't focus on people. I focus on what I'm doing for myself. Because there's a time to focus on others and then there's a time to focus on yourself. Because God does that. There was a time when Jesus focused on people and then there was a time when he focused on himself when he went to the garden and he stayed there for many hours to pray. There was a time when he went to the boat and he laid down and slept. There are times when God gives you and directs your path so that you don't become entangled into people's preferences and personal agendas. Thank God for that. But anyway, the Bible says you can overcome struggles through putting your expectations on God. If you expect God to move on your behalf, you're not expecting people. And if you're not expecting people, you're not focusing on what they're doing or not because you're going to focus on what God is allowing and how God is going to allow you to work with. You don't care what people say because people are not paying your bills. You don't care what people want because people are not paying your bills. You don't care what people are trying to orchestrate because you are committed to God and God first and foremost. And whatever their problems are, are their problems. You can't let everybody's problems overflow to become your problems. Because God doesn't tell you to be involved with everybody's problems. And you don't let people try to put you in situations that it's not about. No matter who they are. Because God gives you wisdom. And wisdom would destroy deceit and folly. The Bible says that we can overcome by our faith that we have in Jesus Christ. We can overcome any obstacle and experience victories in our life when we focus on Christ and not people. I'm sure you have hot people and I'm sure you have cold people. I don't know the difference and I don't get it. Because to me, there's only two types of people. Either you for God or you're not. And anything else is people's personal agenda. And God is not going to honor your personal agenda, but he will honor his word. 
nowhere in the Bible does it dictate to be orchestrated by that. So he says in 1 John 5, 4, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. He didn't say whosoever is hot or cold overcometh the world. He said whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, some may try to put a cum in hot and cold. To me, that's folly. That's people's personal issues, and I don't have nothing to do with that. Don't know about it, and I would never allow that to even be a concern. Because everybody know what you drive ain't going to elevate nothing anyway. Because the only thing that gets ever elevated is God's standards. If you're talking about God's kingdom, you're talking about his standards. And his standards elevate. Unless you're elevating based on your personal agenda. And if you're elevating based on your personal agendas, then maybe you need to reconsider what God is really doing. So when God talks about overcoming and being overcomers, we hold on to the word of God. Now, when we look at this and we see this for what it is, kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God talks about a lot of things. He says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you're seeking the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is every day. The kingdom of God is every month. The kingdom of God is every season. So that takes the care of your hot and cold people. Because he's every season. He said these things will be added unto you. If you're seeking the kingdom of God, you're neither in or out. He's omnipresent. And your inner out will be based on people's opinions. Whatever issues they might have. So you have to be careful about their issues. Because they may, one group may consider you in, another group may consider you out. One group may consider you up, another group may consider you down. Well, I, I don't know. I don't get it. I've never been involved in seasons. I've never worked based on seasons. All of my career has been working throughout the entire year. So I don't know anything about hot working and cold working. I've never had a job that I didn't sit in an office with stockings and heels and suits or dresses. I, I don't know. I mean, those are the only types of jobs I've ever had. I've never had a job doing gym. I'm not a gym instructor. So I don't know anything about that. I've never worked for Maryland Park and Plain. I don't know anything about that. And I certainly would have never been involved in any church with any of that. I don't know anything about that. So I'm so thankful to God that I don't have to be concerned about that because that would have anything to do with me. And what I do on my personal time certainly would not be tied into anybody else. So I thank God for that. That's the blessing when you're committed unto God and allowing God to direct your pace. So it wouldn't be anything I would be concerned about with that. Now, the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Well, let's look at and see what your labor is not in vain. Normally, during the summertime, 
we would do vacation Bible school. And vacation Bible school, we're in the Bible. We're doing music and Bible, music and Bible. We're not doing your gym. We're not doing other activities. And if I do that, that's my personal time. That's my personal preference that I do on my own time. Remember I spoke year, a, a, a while back about Paul had personal and he had ministry. And you cannot always bridge personal with ministry. Because personal is personal. And if people get to your personal and bridge with your ministry, they'll make a great mistake. Because personal is personal. I'm so glad you have personal and you have ministry because God knows the difference. Although you still honor God even with your personal. And I'm so thankful that there was nothing I would ever want. And so wherever that is coming from, please keep me out of that. Because that is not of God and it is impossible. And see, the wisdom of God will protect you and keep you out of some things that will keep you steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the works of the Lord. I didn't say work of people. I said works of the Lord. There is a difference. And then the Bible says, which is also very strange that we must hold on to, that whatever you do, make sure you're doing it unto God. Because if you're doing it unto God, you won't be disappointed because you're doing it unto God. And if you're doing it unto God, you understand that God rewards. And God rewards based on his justice. God rewards based on his mercy and his grace. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. See, I've always been very blessed to have an office job. I don't work from home. I normally work in office. I'm not one of your house workers. I work in an office. All my professional career has been an office. Although I've had an office at home, I always work in an office on large companies' properties or in an organization property. So I don't really know about working from home with nobody. That would be personal, not corporation. And that's normally done just to keep up the skill sets. And I thank God for it because he's allowing you that no matter where you at, what you're doing, you're doing it to the Lord. So if you're doing it unto the Lord, you don't have to worry about what nobody else is doing, where nobody's going and what nobody's saying. You'll get blessed by God because you're honoring and doing it unto God. In other words, you don't have your eyes on the things that's not going to reward you. You place your eyes on the one who's going to reward you. The one who helps you to honor him the most. The one who helps you to do his will and to know his will the most. The one who helps you to labor for him and rejoice and rest in him because he knows everything that he's allowing to orchestrate on your behalf for his glory because of who he is. So the Bible says that if you are seeking the kingdom of God first, then you're going to serve the Lord in all that you do. And you're going to be steadfast. See, steadfast is not based on whether you get a check or whether you don't get a check. Steadfast is you're going to do what you do because you love God. And he's going to make a way out of nowhere. 
I preach all of these messages. And I enjoy doing every one. Because God has given it to me. And he's allowing me to preach and teach these messages. Because he's orchestrating me to do that. So I can be faithful no matter where I'm at. I can be in a pulpit every Sunday and preach like this. I can be in a classroom every Sunday and preach like this. I have. Many of you have known that. I've done that for 15, 20, 30 years. And I can be in a home and still be just as faithful. Whether people see me or don't see me. Whether they hear me or don't hear me. That's not going to change what I do for God. Because God sees and hears everything. My faith is unto God. And so I can be unmovable in the work of God. Unmovable meaning you have not moved your dedication into God. I don't care where you go, your dedication unto God don't leave. And some people make their dedication unto God unto a people. But your dedication unto God is not about a people. It's about a holy and righteous God. That's why Paul had to go to the Gentiles. But his dedication went to the Gentiles. It was to God. And God said, I'll make it so that your labor won't be in vain. So whether somebody's enjoying themselves or not, that's insignificant. That's between them and God. There's a time for everything. There may be a time for you to mourn, but it may be a time for somebody else to rejoice. They don't have to mourn because you're mourning. They may not know you, may not know what you're going through. It's their time in the Lord to rejoice. You can't criticize them because they rejoice. Because you're mourning, that may be the time for you to mourn. But it may be the time for somebody else to rejoice. Because the Bible says there's a time for everything. What does a door have to do with anything being closed? Because certainly God is a spirit and he's not contained by your doors. He doesn't need a door to be open or closed with whatever he's going to do. He's not contained by buildings. He's not contained by your locations. He's not contained by your weather. He's not contained by your men, women, boys or girls, black, white, or any other culture. He's not contained by your location. He's not contained by your weather. He's not contained by what you wear, what you drive, or your economic status. He's a God of creation, and he's far greater than humanity. And when God uses a, a phrase as a door, that's just a paraphrase. That God can move you through obstacles, but it's not about a door. He's showing you his faithfulness is far greater than where you are. You don't stop what you do for God because a person may have some issues. Let them take that up with their God. How do we know? Because Paul had a problem with one of the other disciples. And he went and continued to do the will of God. He didn't let his discourse stop him from being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. If what you're doing for God, then you're going to be faithful to God. Whether people see or know what you're doing or not, it's not going to be. For people, it's going to be for God. And if people want to partake of it, fine. If they don't want to, fine. That's how good God is. That's why I preached a message the other day about taking advantage of the opportunities that God gives and makes available for your life. How do we know? 
Well, Joseph would have never known that he would be an excellent resource to be the minister in Potiphar's house had he never been betrayed by family members, sold and put in a ditch to be left for dead. But God took what was meant for evil and transported him to another place. Just because he was in another place did not mean the vision was going to change. Just because he was at another place did not mean that the favor of God was still not upon his life. Just because he was at another place did not mean that Joseph was not supposed to stay faithful unto God. Sometimes circumstances can change your venue, but it doesn't change your position in Christ. Sometimes circumstances can change some situations, but it doesn't change your dedication to God. Sometimes circumstances can change a lot of things, but it doesn't change what you're doing. I'm not asking anyone to put me in any place. I'm not asking anyone to acknowledge anything. I'm not asking anyone. I'm asking God for his will to be manifested over my life. I don't know about this country and city stuff. I don't know what that's about. I don't even know why it came about. I don't even know what the differences are. Because if the truth be told, many of them don't know what the difference is. Look at what's being done. Look at what's being said. Look at what's being exemplified. Look at the changes. That's an indication that that is not coming from God. Because God is very distinct and he's very knowledgeable in his differences. And his differences are either you're for him or you're not. Paul didn't change because he went to the Gentiles. He was still a Jew. Paul didn't change because he had Roman citizenship. He was still a Jew. Baptized, ordained, and called by God. His location did not change who he is. His location did not change his anointing. His location did not change his faith. What am I saying? No matter where I'm at, that doesn't change who I am and what I do. It may change how I do it, but it doesn't change what I do. It may change the creativity that God gives me, but it doesn't change what I do. It may change the method in which God uses it to orchestrate, but it doesn't change who I am. What am I saying? I'm a preacher and teacher of the word of God. So whether I'm in a classroom, a boardroom, a pulpit, a prison ministry, a hospital ministry, a nursing home ministry, or any other place, that doesn't change who I am. And it doesn't change how God moves over situations. Because God doesn't change. And the weather is not going to change. Because God changes not. Not even with your weather. How do we know? Because when it rained for 40 days, that was the same God. When he held back the sun, that was the same God. When he sent fire and brimstone down to destroy the city of Solomon and Gomorrah, that was the same God. When he talked about the weather, that's the same God. And God does not change based on your condition. Nor does he change based on your location. And so Paul understood his blessing was coming from him. Oh, you do know a blessing is not about seeing people or not. A blessing is about being obedient to God, whether you see them or not. 
Because people will try to change your blessing. And if people can change your blessing, your blessing is not coming from God. Because God's blessing will never be changed by people. What did he tell the prophet? Don't ever curse when I bless. Don't ever change what I bless. That's impossible for you to curse. That's impossible for you to change. That's impossible for you to orchestrate. That's impossible for you to make it about what you want to make it about. See, me being a mother doesn't change nothing about me being a pastor. I didn't get hired being a mother. I got hired being a pastor. And a mother is personal responsibility, not work responsibility for what I'm hired for. And so that changes nothing. And if I've been a mother since 1980, why did it be why did it become an issue about being a mother later on in years? Because nothing changed. Just the people that became mothers. And I wouldn't have anything to do with that. That's why the Bible tells you. Stay focused and stay trustworthy to a holy and righteous God. I didn't have a child. And I didn't get married. So nothing changed. And I didn't get divorced. So nothing changed with me. With none of the churches I've ever been at. The only thing changed with me is work position. The responsibility of my work performance, but not my personal life. That never changed. I didn't change my name. I didn't change my career. I didn't change my dedication unto God. Whether I be around certain people or not, that didn't change nothing. That's why the Bible says to everything there is a season and there is a time and a purpose under heaven. Who determines your season and time and purpose under heaven? God, not people. Because it's going to be God, the same God doing your hot weather, the same God doing your cold weather, the same God doing your rainy weather, the same God doing your wind. When they were making about the wind, before they got into the hot, it was about the wind that you can feel blowing to know that God exists. He can even control the wind and the tornadoes. He can control all things. He can control what you get and what you don't get. And wise people will want what God wants for their life. See, some of you wonder why some people are happy. Because they're trusting in God. They want what God wants for their life. And as long as you want what God wants for your life, you ain't concerned. <laughs> You're too happy trusting in God. No matter what people may be trying to orchestrate situations to get their results, you're too happy trusting in God. No matter what may change, you ain't worried about that. You're too happy trusting in God. Because God changes not. So there's a time to be born. And a time to die. And a time to plant. And a time to pluck up. Which is planted. The Bible said there's a time. An appropriate time for everything. And either you're going to be identified by what God says or not. What does hot have to do with me? Nothing. Where is it coming from? Can you validate, substantiate? Can you come up against a holy and righteous God and make it true? 
Or are you trying to orchestrate what God is not allowing? See, you get blessed when God doesn't allow what somebody may try to orchestrate. How do we know? How do we know? Because of who God is. Who are you going to receive from? God or people? Who are you going to listen to? God or people? Because people will change over you based on your work, based on your time, based on what you can do for them to benefit them, based on what they think they can get. But if they can't be consistent through every weather that there is, then you have to question their integrity, their faithfulness and dedication unto God. Oh, come on, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. So the Bible says, if there's an appropriate time for everything, then let God work it out. I can't accept what you say. I have to accept what God says. Because God is the final authority of my life. And you could be here today and gone tomorrow. And people don't normally apologize unless they made a mistake and found out that their plans were not God's will or plans. And God knows all things. Oh, bless the name of the holy and righteous God. So, I don't know anything about small businesses. I've never been involved in that. I don't try to get involved in other people's businesses. And what I do on my personal time is what God motivates me to do. It's not for other people. It's what I'm doing that God is motivating me to do. Now, why would I need to get an us? Why would anybody think I would need to get an us? When I don't even know what that's about. Because God never discussed that with me. He's never made that a concern for me. I was doing just fine before that even appeared to exist. So I don't really know what it's about. Can't miss what you never had. Can't miss what you've never been involved in. Can't miss what you're not doing. It's not even a thought, not even a concern. It's not even a desire. See, that's how you become more than conquer when your faith and trust is in a holy and righteous God. And not the people trying to orchestrate that never is satisfied. Once they try to accomplish one way and you don't pay attention, they'll change it to something else. You don't pay attention, they'll change it to something else. I don't get into that. That's not my career path. As somebody would use a statement, that's beyond my pay grade. But that doesn't apply to me. But that's just a, a phrase that you may hear some say. Come on and bless the name of the Lord.
Because when you spend time with God, communicating with God, he will take all of those concerns away from you. That's why you don't end up having strokes. That's why you don't end up having nervous breakdown. That's why you don't end up having suicidal thoughts. That's why you don't end up having murder concerns because you're not focusing on those things. You're focusing on a holy and righteous God. And the devil will want you to focus on other things. The weather over God. When God is the creation of all weather. Whatever God decides the weather to be, that's his choice. I can't control him, nor can I control the weather. And if you love God, you learn how to adjust with whatever God dictates it to be. Because God is the one that's controlling and orchestrating. If it's cold, put on a coat. If it's hot, take it off. If it's raining, put an umbrella. If the wind is blowing, take it down. And if somebody think they got something, let them pay. Why would you be concerned? Because many times they get things you don't want anyway. And if they don't know you don't want it and don't care, that's their problem. And by the time they find out, it'll be too late. See, the devil wants you to focus on things that's not even true. That's why they are monitor and watch everything you do. Because they wouldn't be concerned with your doing. So the Bible tells us, whatever you're going to do, make sure you're unmovable in the dedication to a holy and righteous God. Not to people, but to God. Now, I love people, all types of people. But I love God more. And I can normally deal with a lot of people. That doesn't bother me. I've been in this profession for a long time. I'm not a novice. And I thank God for the years that he has kept me and allowed me many God-given opportunities. And I don't take any God-given opportunity lightly because it's unto God, no matter where I'm at. It's unto God. So I would be a house and a church and a job and everything else you want to make it about. Not one or the other. I wouldn't be in that category. But I'm sure somebody else might be. But not me. And I let God dictate that. Because I've never been disappointed in God. There's not a place God has ever taken me. There's not a task I've never done. That I haven't been well pleased with God allowing me that opportunity. No matter how it turned out. Because God knows everything. And I don't go looking for nothing. Or no one. Because if I need. I go to the throne of God and let him work it out. With everything that God does, you see the blessing that comes from God will never be dictated by humanity. If humanity can dictate your blessing, you need to find another God.
Because that's the indication. You don't have the true living God. And so you can rejoice when you hold on to the promises of God. Now, if you're holding on to promises of humanity, then you would have issues because you're dependent upon flesh. But if you're holding on to the promises of God, you don't have to ever worry about anything. Because God will never fail. If he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. If he tells you to do it, do it. And watch him work it out. How do we know? David put on Saul's arm. And he couldn't fight Goliath. Because he was trying to fight Goliath. With a tire that was made to fit Saul. God didn't tell David to do that. So when David obeyed God and he went after Goliath for righteous indignation, David used a slingshot and he defeated Goliath, something that no one has ever done in history. Use a slingshot to take a Philistine, a giant David. That is to show you that when you're in the hands of God, he'll have you do something you've never done before. That people have never known you to do, have never seen you to do, and you would destroy God. Because God is doing it. He's orchestrating. And if David didn't trust God, he would have never destroyed the Philistine. If he'd have listened to people, he would have never thought he could destroy the Philistine. Because nobody was able to destroy the Philistine. But when David destroyed the Philistine, then everybody knew the Philistine can be destroyed. But before, they never thought he could be destroyed. They thought he would kill David. But David destroyed the Philistine, the giant, Goliath. How? Because he obeyed God. So it really wasn't David's power, it was God's power. It really wasn't David's objective and plan. It was God's objective and plan for David. God orchestrates and works things out according to his will in your life when you yield to him. When you yield to him. Not when you're trying to please people, but when you're pleasing in the sight of God. Stop letting these worldly elements control who you are. Stop letting these worldly elements dictate who you are. Now, I have a career as a programmer, but I'm not a programmer anymore. Thank God for that. Because that doesn't make me who I am. You are more than the title of a job. That's just defined by the company you work for. You could be at one company and be called a program. You can go to another company and be called an IT specialist doing the same job. Just different types and different pay scales. So you don't let Titles define who you are. You let the kingdom of God define who you are. I belong to God first and foremost. So no matter what I do, I have to do it all unto God. That's all. I'm not defined by what I drive. If what I drive makes me who I am, then I got a poor God. A poor God that don't have no power and no knowledge. Because God is far greater than what I drive. 
He's far greater than where I live. He's far greater than anything I could do. And if I can only be associated and defined by what I live, what I drive, and what I own, that I've missed the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus that's based on him and not what I have acquired. That's why you have people to commit suicide. That's why you have people to steal and lie and destroy one another. Because they made their self-worth based on what they think people will honor them and exalt them about. Not based on God's principles and standards. That changes not. How do I want to rephrase this? Whether you have a child or not, when you reach a certain age, you are considered a woman. So a woman is not defined by whether you have a child or not. A woman is defined by their age. You're no longer a child. You are an adult. So a man is not defined by whether he has a child or not. That's what mothers and fathers are defined as. They have children. But they're not defined as a man or woman based on whether they have a child. That would be folly. Because in the Bible, everybody didn't have kids. When Jesus went to Mary, she didn't have a child. When Jesus went to Elizabeth, before John was born, and before Jesus was born. When Abraham was dealing with Sarah, Sarah was promised by God she's a woman, but she didn't have a child. We have to be careful how we define ourselves because we're not defined by what we have. We're defined by who we are in Christ. That doesn't change based on what we have because what we have can be controlled by humanity, but who we are can never be controlled by man. I'm a woman of God. You can't control that. That's not based on whether I'm a member of a church or not. That's not based by whether you allow me to sit in your pulpit or operate in your classroom. That doesn't make me a woman of God. I'm a woman of God because God defined me as a woman of God. He deposited within me to be a woman of God. And you can't change that. No matter what you do. You can't change what God is defined. It has nothing to do with people. It's defined by God. Abraham was defined as being the father of many nations. That wasn't defined by people. That was defined by God. Abraham was blessed by God, not by people. God told Abraham, go and I'll bless you. I will do this. You do know God is the one who's doing it. You do know God is the one who's doing it. God didn't tell Abraham when. He just told Abraham, I read. And yes, Abraham made some mistake. He got scared. And said Sarah was a sister because he didn't want to die. And he knew he was dealing with a king that would have killed him to take his wife. But God worked with that. And the king couldn't touch his wife. God will work some situations out in your life where people can't touch you, even if they want to. Whatever they do won't work. Whatever they try won't last. Whatever they plot won't be executed because of God. It won't work. They couldn't keep Paul in the prison. They locked him up. They couldn't keep him. They couldn't keep Peter in prison. They locked him up. They couldn't keep him. Because God intervened. 
And when God intervenes, no flesh, blood, principality can come up against a God that intervenes on your behalf. Because of who God is. He's a faithful God. He's a God of glory and honor and great expectation. He's a God of love and mercy and understanding. He's a God of no guile. He's a God of no deception. He's the Lord of all lords and king of all kings. He is the great I am. And nothing can come up against him. He sets the standards of what is pleasing in his sight. He determines and orchestrates all that he wants. He determined he was going to outpour his spirit in Jerusalem when he told his disciples to go there and meet. He could have did it while he was in heaven, before he came down and went to the cross. But he had a plan, and his plan was going to be executed the way he wanted it to. And so don't listen to people that speaks out of the ways of God. Think about this. If God is who he is, don't you think that God can make sure he get to you to be and do whatever he wants you to have? And do you think that people can come up against a holy and righteous God? No. So trust God enough to know that God can orchestrate anything he wants. Don't allow the adversary to tell you something that God is not saying. To get you to move in an area that God never told you. To get you to feel that you have to receive from me. Don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about how they try to define you. Don't worry about how they think they see you. Don't worry about what they think you have or what they think you know they have. Because that's wishy-washy. And anytime people keep changing people, that's wishy-washy. Which means they're unstable in all their ways. And anything that's unstable in all their ways, it is not validated, orchestrated, nor mandated by God. That's why Jesus didn't receive anything from Satan. Satan was only offering Jesus what he already owned. How can somebody offer you something what God has already gave you? It just may not have been manifested. How can someone give you something what God has already given you? It just hasn't been manifested and revealed to you. Jesus already had it all that Satan was trying to offer him. So Jesus knew, you can't give me nothing. You can't even do that for me. You'll offer me what I already have. In fact, you're offering me less. When I have far greater. That's what I love about Matthew 4. When the adversary came at Jesus and offered him less than what he already had. Either the adversary was real dumb and didn't know 
all that he possessed or the adversary was real dumb and thinking Jesus was going to fall for his deception. I haven't figured out which one yet. But Jesus knew that's not going to work. How are you going to give me something you don't own? You got kicked out of heaven. You can't do nothing for me. And you trying to offer me something? You don't even have the position. You don't even have my father's righteousness. You had enmity with my father, which means you had enmity with me. And sometimes we find ourselves in those predicaments. That's why I love the Lord so much. Jesus was never stressed. He tells us, don't be anxious for nothing. It is not God's will that you be stressed. If you stress, you need to take some time and lay before the Lord. Because if you stress, you're not trusting in God. You're trusting in flesh, but not God. Because when the power of God comes upon your life, you won't be stressed. He said, I'll give you perfect peace whose mind stays on me. I'll keep you in perfect peace. If you're trusting in God, you won't be stressed because he said, be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication. Make your request made before me and the God of peace that passes all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind. See, God has a mechanism to keep you out of the cares of this world. Trust him. And let him work it out. And don't let anybody call you when God has not defined you as. Don't let anybody try to manipulate you that God is not calling you as. Don't let anybody try to control you when you belong to God. They tried to control the disciples. But disciples obey God. They tried to make the disciples think somebody had something they wanted. But the disciple trusted God. Don't fall for deception. Because either you know God is a God that's able or he's not. He can keep you any place he puts you. He could have kept Joseph with his family. But he knew his family was going to do that. Jo God knew Joseph's family was going to trip when Joseph told him something that the father had revealed to him. And because his family didn't understand it, and this is more than about food. This is about trusting God. They thought that Joseph wanted something. And Joseph didn't want anything from his family. He was just revealing to them what God had shown him his family would do. So his family got halted. They got arrogant. And they didn't want what Joseph had revealed to them to come to pass. So they plotted against the very will of God for Joseph's life. You can't plot 
against the will of God for, <laughs> for anyone's life that God is moving and working in. You may think you can get them out of the Satan, but God will use that and orchestrate it to get them right where he wants them at for their opponent moment. That's why Joseph said what you meant for bad, God meant for good. And sometimes we don't see what people meant for bad, that God meant for good until we sit in the presence of God, worship God and trust God, communicate with God and allow God to reveal all that was meant for bad and how God orchestrated it for your good. Joseph trusted God. He didn't understand why God was allowing that to happen. Sometimes we don't understand why God is allowing some things to happen. Sometimes we don't understand why people sometimes put us in stuff we don't even know what they're putting us in. Because they'll have their plans and you don't even know what their plans are about. They'll come to your school, sit beside you, hold a conversation, have their own plans, and you don't even know why they're doing it. You don't even know who they are or why they're even there planning stuff. And then God will just move things around, and you'll never see them and don't know what they were planning. Because that's how God is. He's going to have his will, no matter what. Because that's who God is. See, I've never been paid to keep kids. I've never been paid to work with kids. I've never been paid to do anything for kids. That's not my profession. I had far excelled that area in many years ago. But that doesn't mean that if I'm at a place, I would not volunteer my time. Jesus sat and taught the disciples, put a child in his arms, set him in his lap and said, forsake not the children. For such is the kingdom of God. But he didn't spend all his time ministering with kids. He was discipling adults. But he reminded them. That was for somebody else. He knew what the father had him do. And he didn't choose his disciples for that. He chose his disciples to do what he was doing. So his disciples followed him. You can't let people, just anybody tell you what you're supposed to be doing for God. Didn't Peter try to tell Jesus what he was supposed to be doing? And Jesus said, Peter, I rebuke you. I have to do what my father's telling me to do. Not what you think I should be doing. You better stop listening to people's wants and you better know God's will. Because you'll never be disappointed when you're trusting in the will of God. You won't even care about what you see or don't see. 
Because if you're trusting in the will of God, whatever the will of God is going to be. See, when he bless you, he can just put it right in your spirit. Right in your spirit. Right in your spirit. If he said he's going to do it. Yeah, I know. People can mess with your cell phone and all your devices and your equipment. That's not a blessing. That's an indication of what the Bible talks about in the end times. Those things shall come to pass. That's why he tells you not to put your faith and trust in those things. Because they should come to pass. The blessing is when God moves within you and he keeps you so rooted and grounded that the things that would otherwise destroy you they're used to ignite you, to compel you, to even do more of what the God is telling you to do. Despite of what it appears as. Because of who God is. Now, I don't have a problem being seen. But I don't go out to be seen. But I've never been shy and had a problem being seen. So that's never been a concern. And, and, and I really don't want to get into your good and great. Because now that's defined by humanity which is not always in the alignment with God. And that could be changed. But God doesn't change. But humanity will. And so sometimes you have to say, wait a minute, God. This is not even your will. Because it'll be defined by what you're not even defining it as. And so then you have to let God have. And sometimes you need to ask God, what are you saying about this situation? Because God can take any situation and work it out for your good. If you love God and if you trust him and he can guard you in a way where you can love one another despite of situation. It's not you loving in the natural. It's you loving through the spirit of God. You see, the Holy Spirit can take you through some situations that you can look back and ask, how in the world did I deal with that? And you won't even know other than it had to have been God. Because he said, I'll be with you always. And what does wearing a hat or not have anything to do with the many things that you do? Because Jesus had many hats spiritually. He was empowered to do many things. And the many things that he was empowered to do was never controlled by humanity. And when God is ready for you to do those things, you're going to do those things whether humanity wants them done or not. And unfortunately, humanity thinks they can control. That's why some of the Assyrians think they took 
and defeated God's people. But they didn't defeat God's people. God allowed them to defeat. It wasn't them. It was God allowed them. But they thought it was them. And when God got ready for his people to get their righteous position back, he didn't allow them to destroy them anymore. So I'm not defined by activities, by no means. I'm not defined by my career, by no means. I'm defined by God that changes not. I'm not defined by an address. I'm a woman of God no matter where I'm at. I'm a woman of God no matter who people I'm with. And if it changes, then it's not of God. Because Jesus didn't change who he was by where he was at and the people he was among. When he was with the Pharisees, he was still Jesus, the son of God. When he was with the disciples, he was still Jesus, the son of God. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane praying, he was still Jesus, the son of God. When he was on the cross in agony, he was still Jesus, the son of God. And when he was put in the tomb, he was still Jesus, the son of God. So whether you're employed or not does not change who you are. It just changes what you do. And the pay that you receive, but it doesn't change who you are. That's why you can't let the economy, the world control who you are. Jesus is the son of God. He wasn't changed by the circumstances. His circumstances did not change his relationship to the father. Your circumstances should never change your relationship with the father. Your circumstances should never be far greater than the power of God. And people do not change who you are if you are defined by God. Only when you're defined by people. But never by God. Because he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. He will call those things to be into existence. What is quite often not seen by humanity. But it's quite often not realized and understood by humanity. Joseph's family didn't know he was going to be the minister of Pharaoh's house. Joseph's family thought they destroyed him, got rid of him. But God took what Joseph's family did to destroy him and elevated him. And then Joseph's family had to see his elevation. when they demise to destroy him.
sometimes people can try to destroy you. And you can't destroy what God has other plans for. And so Joseph's family thought they were dictating and controlling. But God allowed it because it would move Joseph where he wanted him at. Sometimes you can go through something and God will allow you to go through it to move to get you to operate in different areas so that you will know firsthand what is being done. And then he'll just set the stage and allow it to flourish. He didn't tell Joseph to go to Pharaoh, Potiphar's house. Joseph was betrayed and sold and taken into slavery. But God had other plans for Joseph. When God has other plans for your life, humanity can never control your life. When God has plans, humanity cannot change the plans of God. You have to trust God. And some situations and conditions you don't have to get into. You can let God work it out. You may find yourself in it. Don't even know where it's coming from. Don't even know how it got there. But if you trust in God, you're not going to worry about it. Because God is not going to allow anything to happen to you that he can't control if you're placing your trust in his hands. He's your armor bearer. He's your rock of ages. He can keep you pure before him, having a right standing in him. I'm sure Joseph looked back over everything he went through with his family. Probably wondering, why did y'all do this to me? I was just trying to explain to you what God was doing, what he was telling me. I had a dream. I didn't understand the dream. Why did you do this to me? I'm sure for all those years, he wondered why. Because God wanted to show Joseph that you really have to guard your heart, even with those that are close to you. You have to guard your heart because Satan can touch those that are close to you. He did it with Joseph's family. He did it to Peter. And Peter had just told Jesus who he was, the son of God. And it's not to say Joseph's family was bad. They just didn't fully trust God. They didn't fully understand what God was doing. And Joseph, sometimes, People don't always understand what God is doing in your life. And so they'll come up against you, not understanding. You don't want nothing they hate. And Joseph's family thought he wanted them to 
do so. He was just trying to explain what God was telling him that he didn't even fully understand. A misunderstanding because of wrong perception and wrong alignment of faith in God. And that can happen to anybody. It can just happen. And it's okay to start off that way. But there should come a point in your life where you check it with the Lord to verify and to make any changes in the wrong perception so you can get it right. It's not that you went down the wrong path. It's not that you made the mistake. The problem is when you don't realize it and go to the Father to get it right and ask for forgiveness. And later, Joseph family found out that God was just orchestrating something for Joseph that would end up saving the very ones that were trying to destroy him. Isn't it strange? Those who try to destroy you will be the very one you will end up having to operate on God's behalf. Look at Jesus. The very ones that was trying to destroy him were the very ones. He was there for another reason to offer them a better life but they couldn't see. They had wrong objectives for Jesus. They had wrong understanding for what Jesus wanted. Jesus didn't want anything they could offer. He just wanted to obey the Father. Joseph didn't want anything from his brothers. He just was having a vision and didn't fully understand the impact of the vision. Have you ever had God speak into your life and you don't fully understand everything that God is doing and showing you and people don't understand and they think you want something? And no matter how much you try to tell them, they just don't get it. And you're just trying to obey the Father. That's all that Joseph was going through. A moment of uncertainty, of a vision God gave him, but he didn't fully understand the vision. He didn't understand everything. But look at God worked it out. Aren't you glad that God can work out situation in the midst of it all? That you can go through something, worship and praise God and come through smelling like sweet aroma in the nostril unto God. Where your perfume won't be able to cover anything because God can smell the sweet aroma of the pure sincerity of a worship and a desire to please God. That's who God is. A great God of sincerity that there's nothing he can't do You can look back over your life and see the hands of God orchestrating and moving in situations that you don't even know how he did. You just know he did. That's how great God is. He can let you lay down at night and sleep and rest peacefully. 
not even worrying about a thing. Because you know, if you're in God's hands, it's going to be all right. Somehow, some way. You know that when God is ready to move on your behalf, nobody under the earth of his creation can stop him orchestrating his will. And God is just building integrity in people's lives. He's just building trust in people's lives. He's just purging and shifting and revealing who he is. Because of what he can do. And so when I started off about saying, I don't have a favorite color, I don't. And when I started off, I don't have a favorite weather, I don't. And when I started off, I don't have a self-righteous personal agenda, I don't. And when I started off, I'm just trusting in God. I am. And when I started off, I don't know all the places God's going to take me. I don't know all the things God's going to have me to do. I don't know everything God has for my life. Only what he's shown me vaguely that compels me to continue to trust him day after day after day. Because I didn't get to the places because of people. That's why people never knew how I got there. I didn't get things because of people. That's why people never knew how I got things. I didn't do things because of people. It was all orchestrated by a holy and righteous God. That's why I couldn't tell you. It was done by God. There is no secret what God can do. And so when you trust in God, he can take all the concerns. He can take all the frustration. He can take all the stress and uncertainty and trials and tribulations that you might ever go through. And people won't even know what you've been through. They won't even have a clue. Because you gave it to God. And when you give it to God, cast all your cares upon him because he loves you. He cares for you. When you give it to God, Nothing else will matter. You'll know some things is going to happen before they know it's going to happen. So when it happened, it doesn't bother you. It was like you were already warned by God, not by people, by God. And when you're warned by God before something happens, that lets you know you are really connected with a holy and righteous God. Because he's warning. And his warning is protecting you. It's encouraging you. It's covering you. It's confirming and validating what he said he's going to do for you in the midst of the situation. That's why you don't have to worry. You don't even have to be concerned. Because of who God is. Because of who he is. See, your hat is not about how many people pay you. 
It's about the multiplicity of things that God can have you to do, whether it be a spiritual hat or a physical hat. But the hat doesn't determine the people. Come on, let's get some godly wisdom. Oh, and I thank God for his wisdom. If we would just trust him, let's bring this to closure. See, for other people, you may have to talk to other people. But for me, God just had me preaching my sermons. That's what he had for me. I can't speak for everybody. That's what he had me to do, to go through it. He knew this is what you're going to do to go through it. This is how I'm going to orchestrate this with you as you go through it. This is how I want you to do it. And so you obey God despite of the situation. Despite of the circumstance, you can't get into human identification. You can't get into human categorization. You can't get into human wants. It has to be God given identification, God given categorization, and God given want and desire. See, this is not about what I'm seeing in my eyes. This is not about whether I'm young or whether I'm old. This is about the reality of what can happen. This is not about what I understand or what I don't understand. This is about corruption exists in every area. And sometimes you can't do anything about corruption. Sometimes you just have to trust God. Because it can exist in every area. That's just how it is. You know, people are making about a dope. Corruption. Sometimes people try to orchestrate things. Sometimes people mean well. But I got to trust in my holy and righteous God. I can't go by what you say. I have to go by what God says. Because I've lived long enough to know if I live my life based on what you say, I'm going to miss the mark of my high calling in Christ Jesus. Because what you say might be said based on emotions. What you say might be said based on personal objectives. Maybe you got some issues. But God doesn't have issues. He has knowledge. And he judges according to knowledge. And execute righteousness according to his justice. So let's get ready to bring this to closure. Oh yes, let's get ready to bring this to closure. Because I'm so pleased with my heavenly father and all areas of his life.
See, I can't be concerned about corruption. I can't be concerned. Because I'm not ruled by money. I have enough common sense to know everything I worked for was honest man. And so before I do anything dishonest to keep what I work for, I'll let it go. Because I know it came from God. And if God doesn't provide to keep me in it, he'll take me and give me something else. So that he can ensure nobody will ever have anything on me. Because of who God is. See, this is not about who cook or who eat out. That's folly. What they got to do with God, whether you cook or whether you eat out. That's people's personal agendas with their people differences. But what they got to do with anything with God? You can't get in track with people's personal agendas that comes and goes with the weather. Or situation. I don't know about you, but I am so blessed that I know a holy and righteous God. See, my blessing is from knowing a holy and righteous God that can keep me in the midst of it all. He can show you how to encourage yourself in the Lord. He can show you how to motivate yourself in the Lord. He can show you how to have victory in the midst of a situation. Sometimes you're just going to have to wait on God. Because of who he is. I haven't changed nothing I've not always done. I'm not at the same place, but I haven't changed what I do. I've always been a shopper. Always have. Whether it be furniture or household goods or clothing at time, I've always been a shopper. I enjoy shopping. Not to buy for others, for myself. I've just always been that way. Since I've ever had a job. I've always loved and enjoyed keeping house. That has always been enjoyable. Something I just enjoy, home life. I'm a home buyer, but I've always worked outside of the home and had an office in my home. Always enjoy, always love jogging and walking and not riding a bike. That's not my thing. And really not swimming, but later in years, I tried swimming. Haven't mastered that. But I enjoyed it. Something new. Swimming. That I didn't even know I would like. And I found out I liked it. I don't have a favorite preference. I like them both. Feel 
because God has created me that way to like you. And anything God creates for me to do, I always enjoy it. And so I let God decide. I don't decide, I let God decide. Because God has never failed. People have, but not God. People have changed on me, but never God. He stays consistent. And so you learn to trust God with his consistency. And you learn to forgive people. Because they're human. And sometimes their insecurities and fears and self-will will overflow into situation. Especially when they think they can control what you see and what you don't see. What you hear and what you don't hear. We all have eyes and ears. When God is the one that really controls that, that makes you trust God even more. Because it's an indication. It's flesh and not God. And so you love it the most. Let us get ready to go to prayer. This was a blessed day. A very blessed day. I didn't plan to sit down and do this recording. But he had me to do it. I didn't plan to preach it the way I preached it. But he made sure he brought certain things to remembrance. To bring a lot of things to closure. He made sure he showed me, despite of situations, God is still in control. He's still in control. It just as amazes me. There's nothing I couldn't do single. I've did more in ministry single than many married has ever done. And if I recall correctly, I get blessed every time I go. And the married people think he got something. And then when I see, I'm glad I did. Because I would have left. And if they would have trusted God, they really would have received. And it would not have turned out the way it did. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Come on, everybody, open your mouth and worship the Lord. He's worthy of the glory. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, 
all over the room. Open your mouth. Man, woman, boy, or girl. You're the God of creation. And you change this now. You orchestrate all things according to your purpose and your will. And I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your purpose. I thank you for your promise. And I thank you for your will. I'm so glad this is really not about phones. Cell phones, house phones, whatever phones. And all the other things that keep coming from all directions. From the taking out to the trash. To the running of men. You are still the God of creation of all. And you fail not. You don't change who you are. But you are able to orchestrate all things. And my trust is solely in you and you alone. I thank you for covering me. I thank you for preserving me. I thank you for keeping me faithful and unmovable in you. That a place cannot change who you are. That a place cannot limit your ability. Know what you are outpouring or doing. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you told me. Don't listen. Just allow you to reveal within. I rejoice in you being my God. And I'm so glad you orchestrated my path. I thank you so much. I'm so glad, God, that you are my God. I'm so glad, Lord, that you knew before the foundation was created. This moment will be here. You know it'll be right, right now. You know. You know that doesn't change who you are. No, it doesn't change what you're doing. You know a pandemic would come and many plans would not work. Things would change. You knew all things. You knew positions were coming up. But you changed not. And so I thank you, God, because you worked through it all and set the foundation to be exalted and exemplified based on your principles and your will, not humanity's wants, but your will. And so I thank you, God.
I thank you. I thank you for your long suffering. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your providential care. I thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. I thank you for using the moments that you've used every time to bring forth all of these messages. It didn't have to be in a church house. It didn't have to be in a room. You had it wherever you wanted to come forth. Because you knew all things. You are the God of creation. And because of that, God, I thank you in advance. I thank you that my trust was solely in you. Because of who you are. I thank you, God, that I can rest in your provisions. Your provisions of protection. Your provision of my covenant, your right. Your provision of your outcome. Your provision of your integrity. Your provision of you working it out. Despite of the situation. I don't have to go to her majesty. I could just come to your throne and obtain whatever I need. And I thank you, God. I thank you because of who you are. I thank you, Father, for where injustice was done. You showed. Your justice shall always prevail. I thank you, Father, because of who you are and the excellent memory that you have always given me. I thank you, God, because I didn't go to school for finance. And I didn't go to school when I was preaching and teaching the word of God. And I didn't go to school for music. When I did music. But when you allow opportunities you gave me the experience to attend and know firsthand. But you've always worked through me without even the education, even with programming. And then you had me to continue to do things in my own privacy on private moments because of who you are. Thank you, God. Thank you for taking me down memory lane, not to see, but to bring into remembrance all that you see shall come to pass. And to assure me, you knew all things. That's why you compel me to do what I do. Not because of people, because of you. That's why people and things are change. But it doesn't change what you're doing. And that's why you haven't quite confirmed until you're ready to settle and establish it. And so I thank you for that. Because of who you are.
I'm not doing anything I wouldn't have been doing in my privacy of my own home. Nothing changed. I just used a, used a tape recorder. Now I'm using a computer. But nothing changed. And you knew that. You knew it. And history does not repeat itself because you never allow it to be repeated. You modified it. So it could not repeat itself. It was impossible. Because of who you are. And I thank you, God. Thank you for giving me all these opportunities. It wasn't about books or common sense. It wasn't about what somebody been through or not. All excuses for personal agendas. But you knew all things. And you said you were working out. And you are, according to your power and purpose. It wasn't about a room in its color. Although it was orchestrated to try to make it about that. But that didn't work. Because that was not what you were doing. I'm just so thankful, God, that you kept me trusting in you. And you took me out of some situations. that I was put into that I could have remained. But you would not let it happen. I don't know about why anybody made my personal home a day. I don't know anything about that. But you know, Because you know all things. That's why you never stop me from doing what I always have done. That was never about a church. Personal things that I do. With people that never attended the church, I did. So that would be impossible. But you knew. Because you have great wisdom and understanding. And then when the adversary was jealous because I was enjoying my life. Then the adversary wanted to take back. And you knew. And you knew what you would have me to do. <laughs> you are a God of great holiness and righteousness. That's why they keep switching who they keep making it about. People that I was never even around. that I really wouldn't care or have anything to do with about what it was made about. Thank you, God, for not allowing that to be a concern. 
Because you know, I never desired none of that anyway. I was satisfied. I had my home. I had the church I'm working at. I had my vehicle. I'm single. I'm doing it all. There was no need to want or need anything. And I'm so glad, God, you wouldn't let it be fulfilled until you were ready to do it. You even moved IRS from D.C. to Maryland. And now you're talking about moving the feds building to Maryland. <laughs> you are a God of great wisdom and truly know a lot of things. But you knew that wouldn't be a concern for you. You knew it wouldn't be a concern. You know, I wasn't even thinking about none of that stuff. I was too busy enjoying living by myself. Thinking about you. And working on personal things in the privacy of my home. Because of who you are. And then when I went out to do my private moments, that became an issue. It was like I couldn't do anything without it becoming an issue. So you were showing me then. It's because I'm obeying you. And the result is not being accomplished by humanity. You are a great God of knowledge and understanding. Even when it was switched to good and great. Still don't know what that's about. Another division. I'm sure it'll be something else later. Because it just never stops. But I'm so glad you said, if I cast my cares upon you. You will keep me in perfect peace in spite of the situation. So I thank you. Because history certainly did not repeat itself. This has been long. And it's been more purposely and devilishly done. But I now realize before it was also done too. So it didn't repeat itself. You revealed what had already been hidden. And that's why I could not get the results. Thank you, God. Thank you for this message and thank you for finishing so that all the other messages would just be what thus says the Lord. And that tomb has ended and shall never return. You are a God of great resolution. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. It's something about trusting God. It's just something about trusting God. Not trusting equipment. Although I love technology, it's never been stressful. I love technology. It just, sometimes it just holds my attention, I should say. So many things I love. But most importantly, I love the providential care of God's creation. 
and how he works out all things. Before it was Norton Utility and McAfee that we had for security. And I really never, ever had security. But other than the Lord's true security, But even with software security, nothing is really secure. And that's okay. When you're utilizing everything you have for God. See, when, you, when your hands are pleasing unto God, then you don't have anything to hide. So whatever you use, you're going to use to God. Now, I've been testing out chat box. I just wanted to see how it is. I didn't test it out for everything. I just looked at it to see how it works. I don't know who created it. And I would have loved to work with the person to come up with it, to program it, to see how it accessed the CPU. It's almost like a mini computer that can go back to databases. But I like the concept behind it. I think it's a very neat application. Almost like a Bible software. You can just get in information and call up certain scriptures. And as the spirit of God move upon you, you can access those scriptures. And I've always been a part of the automation. Process all the time. And so many places I go, I've always been affiliated with people who are automating things. Even when I went out of town, it was automation. And so for several sermons, I was just accessing it because I just wanted to see how it worked. And I even tried to use it to see if it could teach how to play an instrument. But it'll give you the process to do how to learn, but it doesn't go into the step-by-step -step as far as teaching music notes. So I mean, it's, it's a nice software. Now I asked to teach me music notes and it gave me the music notes. And it talks about the clef, the staff, the duration, the rest, time signatures. So it does have a lot of ability. But it can't physically demonstrate how to play a piano, but it can provide certain instructions. What am I saying? We are moving towards a high technological area. And it was driven by the pandemic. I always wondered how we would get to that in the writings of Revelation. And God was revealing to me during this pandemic. That's how we drove to the technology 
and we're never going to go back from it. Because everybody that's putting up everything on YouTube and Facebook and, and, and Zoom and everything, even when churches return back to the congregation, they're still going to have YouTube, Zoom, and Facebook. To me, it's all the same. Just different platforms that was created. Something God has done. Because that's just the ability of what God does. And technology, what that has to do with anything? I've never been tired of technology. <laughs> I get a, a spiritual high off of technology. I get energy off of technology. That's what my company knew. Give her a project, she can sit behind a computer and work on it all night and won't be tired for three days. She loves it. It challenges me when I'm working with something. I just have to force myself to take a break from it. Because I'm not a computer. And a human has to rest. Even God rested on the seventh day. But I would like for this chat box to actually show the visualization of how to do certain things. But it gives the scales and it explains it. So it is, it is like a mini computer. Which is really nice. I just love trying out new applications and things. I love communicating with computers. That's how I learned how to play the piano. I took an online class. Not because I wanted to be a musician, just was curious to see if I could play. If I wanted to be a musician, I would have spent more time. I don't have that type of interest to be a musician. And that may be something later, but certainly now I don't have that type of interest. I like to be able to play a few songs when I want to play. If I really had an interest, I would have set it up differently and spent more time with it. But my calling is not a musician. This is really interesting. And when I said medical and legal, it wasn't about sickness. It was about something we had worked on that they had closed out. I guess whatever they were doing, it didn't come to fruition. Sometimes you can have visions and work on things, but you can't always bring it to fruition for whatever reason. And I wouldn't have been a part of it. The same way when you get into a door. Who said it was a door to a house? Because certainly I never planned on leaving my home. I wasn't looking to buy another home. I was satisfied with my home. I was satisfied with everything God gave me. And I certainly wasn't planning on moving. My home was big enough. And I could afford it, doing everything I've always done. That's been proven. 
when history tried to create everything I did. Certainly it was only one sound. And I'm going to always enjoy myself. That's not about a person. That's about who I am. That's how God created me. He's not changing who I am. And you can't change what God won't allow you to change. I wasn't trying to be a school teacher. That's the furthest thing from what I ever wanted to be. Although I have excellent teaching abilities, but I wasn't trying to be one. Not something I wanted to be. I've done it voluntarily, but it wasn't something I wanted. What am I saying? God will place desires within you. Because he knows what he's created you for. And just because you do something, do it well, doesn't mean that's the career choice you want. I wasn't trying to change my career field. Why should I? I enjoyed my career field. I didn't need to change it. And I didn't waste my time. Because I wasn't doing things for the wrong motives. I wasn't trying to get you're not trying to get when you already have. And that makes a difference in the person that already has. There's no motive to try to get. You already have. And you can't change what God has already given to make it what it's not. And God knew that no matter how much you try to change, some things you will never be able to control when it comes to God. Because of who God is, that maketh no mistakes. Always remember, either God is going to be Lord and you're going to place it in his hand. Or you're not. But God will resolve it. I'm a living testimony. And the testimony is not coming from people's words. It's coming from God revealing what he knew would try to come to pass, but would never come to pass. Now, I know we have the holidays coming. That doesn't really mean anything to me. I know we have Resurrection Sunday or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to me. That's not going to change anything for me.
I'm sure that happens every Resurrection Sunday. When God is ready to change, he'll change. When God is ready to modify, he'll modify. I am just so thankful I have a God that's full of great wisdom and knowledge. He knows things before they happen and he can warn you before they happen and assure you he knows everything. Because he's God. And why some people don't trust God, I don't know. I guess they're too busy trusting in people's hands. Because we live in a world where some people can't control people. They'll do anything for a dollar or acknowledgement. We see that every day with corruption. We see it every day with many things. But my God needs to sleep nor slumber. He doesn't change who he is. So learn how to love one another. But always follow God. Because he can put things in position that will destroy the very foundation of hell. He's God. The greater the anointing, the greater the trial and tribulation. Never let someone assume ass and then you'll know they assume Jesus wanted to be a king of the world and I'm sure they had many people thinking that that's what Jesus wanted. I'm sure they had many people thinking that Jesus was agenda was to be that and it wasn't So learn how to love one another, forgive one another as God has loved and forgiven you. And let him complete a good work in you that he starts. And all my next messages, I'm going to start exegeting scripture. I'm changing my preaching mode to an exegesis mode. Walking through the scripture. 